the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. And when you look at uh, DeLeon's departure here and Bishop Boswell coming in for star guard um, as true freshman coming in next year um, for Tennessee, where does this leave the Vols and how big of a loss is DeLeon um, when you consider the, the other losses that Tennessee is going to be uh, experiencing from last year's squad? I don't think it's a, a huge one. And that's not to say that he's not a good player. I'd actually be surprised if he doesn't go to a power five school and have some success. Cause I think he's talented, but just where does he fit on the roster? Like it's even you talk about the guys that are losing. He's a dude that needs to have the ball in his hand to be an effective player. And the guys Ziegler is going to have the ball in his hand the majority of the time he's on the court for 35 plus minutes a night. So you kind of look at where does Freddie fit? It never really worked this year because of it. Um, certainly his opportunities were limited because I'm sure when he committed, he didn't expect Santiago Vescovi to be back for a fifth year. And certainly no one expected Dalton connect to be one of the two best players in the country. Um, so I'm sure he would have gotten opportunities and he would have played more if he came back to Tennessee for another year, but none of that was guaranteed. Not, not even, 15 minutes a game was going to be guaranteed for him. And uh, I was always a little cautious or confused or just didn't see how it was necessarily going to fit very well with, with him and Zakai on the roster for how he could have a a really big role. Do you think they look at Bishop as the, just the replacement there and that they don't, Oh, like, cause Santi obviously gone. We'll see with DJ Jefferson over the off season. Uh, Jemai, we assume, is back. We assume Jordan Ganey is back. Um, Zakai, obviously, is probably on his way back. I mean, a lot of questions have been about, like, the bigs, like with Jonas Adu, Tabe Awaka, J.P. Estrella, as, with the latter especially coming on in that last showing, how the, will there be enough minutes to keep everybody happy to make this all work for another year? I'm kind of curious now, because Freddie De Leon, I mean, you could have made the case that he would start next year, because I was looking, like, Grant Ramey, friend of the pod, throughout like as of right now uh, either threw it on twitter or on the ball quest message course i forgot where uh, he saw it but uh like projected starting someone asked him about like the projected starting five for 2024 2025 for balls for the balls and he threw out like zakai jordan ganey jemai mayshak tobey awaka and jonas adu and that got a lot of pushback and i wonder like is that the plan or is that, and then you just fill up with depth around them. Are they like, I, obviously you have to replace Dalton connect in the wing too. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm very curious how Tennessee handles the portal this cycle, especially because I mean, pretty Dillion was a important player. Does this mean there's a lot more trust in camp car? Does this change where camp car is going to slot into the rotation next year? I don't know. Like when you think about roster management this off season, where, where does all that factor in for you? I mean, I thought I had Cam Carr higher on the packing order than Dillion before Dillion transferred. So hmm. to me, he was a more trustworthy guy. You know, the the big, and he, I know you just said it all the talk's been about the big men, because to me, that's the most interesting piece. And if it, the plan is Jonas and Tobe to be the starters in the front court, to me, that's the plans you're selling them to try not to, to try not to lose one of those guys, because yeah. I don't think that's a good plan. I mean, those guys are capable. You can play them together some. But right there from the jump, you're putting two guys that can't shoot the ball from further than 15 feet from the basket on the court together. I mean, if you're throwing Jemai Meshack, certainly a guy that's c- capable of hitting three-pointers. He had some big ones this year. He also turned down a lot of open three-pointers. A guy that we saw in the NCAA tournament, teams left wide open and dared him to shoot. So I don't see how I don't see how those three guys are possibly in the starting lineup together, to be frank. So, uh, yeah, it becomes intriguing. I think they're going to add – at least one uh, wing, you know, wing or shooting guard transfer. And to me, you kind of have. Do you think they need two though? They could. I think they they might need two. I mean, I think that's the obvious needs are wing score, small ball four, or, you know, a a stretch four. And then you just need to probably add shooting. And now obviously that changes. If you lose a big man, you probably need to go get another depth piece. Uh, But where the roster stands right now, where they currently have three, uh spots to work scholarships to work with in the portal i think it's yeah it's adding another uh another shooting not necessarily a shooting guard but a guard that can shoot um is what i would do for the third thing so to me i see the two being a battle of Ganey, cam car and somebody they bring in you know if they land who they want it's probably whoever they bring in but you know or maybe bishop pops like you never know with freshmen like town and freshmen they come in they could be really good you never know zakai no one no one saw zakai coming 
Yeah, no one did. Uh, Bishop Boswell's game does not strike me as a guy that's going to come in and be the offensive player that Tennessee needs at the two. Mm. I think he's a good player. I think he's a really good fit in Tennessee's program because he's a selfless player and he's a really good defensively. He takes that stuff serious. He's not a dude that's going to come in and, and bring the shooting and I think the scoring prowess that Tennessee's going to need at that starting uh, two spot. That doesn't mean he can't come in and contribute um, and maybe play some of the minutes that Freddie Dillion would have played, um, but I don't see him. Again, like you said, it would be a surprise, and bigger surprises have happened, so maybe I shouldn't you know, brush it off that quickly, but I would be surprised. I think there are going to be some surprises this offseason. I think Tennessee, I'm very, very, this is one of the more curious I've been uh, with Tennessee roster management for basketball in the offseason in the Rick Barnes era, because I just think you are riding this high, and you struck gold with Connect in the portal this past time. A lot of pressure on keeping this momentum going and keeping this thing humming going into next year. Um, I'm very curious what this means, um, especially for Zakai uh, nearing the end and um, losing some of these vets like um, Jonas and Santi. And I don't know. I'm very curious how much of it is trust in the young guys in the program. Do they get elevated and you just bank on them? Like, I don't know. I'm very, very curious how Barnes and his staff handles this offseason because there's a lot of movement and a lot of potential. And I just I have no clear idea on where they go in a lot of different ways, which makes it exciting. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's going to be a build toward the future thing. Like, no. This guy's a senior. Jemai's a senior. Jonas is a, mm. a senior. Who knows how many more years Rick Barnes will coach. I think this, there's no start back over with freshman Josiah and freshman Santi. Yeah. And let's build four more years. No, nah, uh-uh. it ain't going to be like that. They're going to do what they need to do to put the very best team on the table to win, to give themselves the best chance to win next season. Doesn't mean development's thrown off the wayside, but they're not just going to roll with the young guys to roll with the young guys either. Jack, final thing here before we wrap up tonight. Uh, Who needs to shine the most in the orange and white game on Saturday? Who are you most fascinated by and think that they need, it'd be good for them uh, this spring to really show out? Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.